Identifying breakout performers is a crucial component to dominating in fantasy football. When your round seven pick performs more like a round two pick, your league mates are in serious trouble. Look no further than last season when Amon Ross St. Brown, who was drafted as the wide receiver 30, finished as the wide receiver eight. On underdog, 28% of the teams that drafted Amon Ross St. Brown made it to the playoffs. That's right. Just by drafting the Sun God, you had a one in three chance of making the playoffs. So how do we identify these breakout wide receivers? And who should we be focused on in 2023? Well, I'm glad you asked because last year, Amon Ra St. Brown was one of my most drafted wide receivers based on a data-driven process that we will follow today and apply to the 2023 wide receiver landscape. There are three critical factors in my process to identifying breakout wide receivers. And for this analysis, when we say breakout wide receiver, we're talking about a player to post their first top 12 or first top 24 fantasy finish. Number one, wide receiver breakouts almost always occur by year six. In fact, the majority of top 24 breakouts happen by year three. Number two, 78% of wide receiver one breakouts already had a wide receiver two or a wide receiver three finish on their resume. 51% of wide receiver two breakouts had already finished as a wide receiver three. And number three, for those wide receivers that don't already have a wide receiver two or wide receiver three finish on their resume that do suddenly break out, well, guess what? They've got a thing in common and it's called talent the underlying talent indicators actually closely mirror that of the wide receivers that already have those top finishes on their resume. And by adding this final step, 93% of the breakout wide receivers since 2012 have had a leading signal. So following this process, let's break down some of the top breakout candidates for 2023 going in round four or later of fantasy drafts. And the first name we're going to talk about is year two wide receiver Christian Watson. He's going in rounds four and five of drafts right now as the wide receiver 21. Watson averaged 13 points per game in a PPR format last season as a rookie, which was already good for a wide receiver three worthy mark. However, when you dig into the details, he was really better than that. He suffered a hamstring injury in week two, then a concussion in week nine. Those things really kept him out of the mix until week 10, when he regained a full-time starting role and he went on an absolute rampage, averaging 17.2 points per game. And that is wide receiver one worthy. Watson's critics will claim that he's just a one trick pony in the vein of a Gabriel Davis. The challenge with that is that archetype of wide receiver typically has a target share of 17 to 18%. Over that stretch run, Christian Watson was well above that, averaging a 23% target share per game, which is wide receiver two worthy. When we find a young wide receiver that can demand a target share like that, as well as get those targets down the field leading to healthy air yards, we should definitely take note. Watson is a player that can score from anywhere on the field. We saw him do it on a reverse. We saw him do it on a slant. We saw him do it against double coverage with bombs across the top. We saw him beat coverage horizontally running crossing plays. This is a guy that can be the centerpiece to the Packers passing game offense which gives him tremendous upside. Right now, you're paying a low-end wide receiver two price tag on Watson. And while there's some risk associated with that, if the Packers offense just isn't very good, most of it's really baked in because he has a wide receiver one upside. In fact, out of the 160 drafts that I've already done, Watson is my most drafted wide receiver in the first four rounds of drafts. I have him on 17% of my teams. Now let's turn our attention to another wide receiver going in a similar range of the draft to Christian Watson, but heading into year four, and that is Jerry Judy. The former first round pick delivered a wide receiver two worthy 13.7 points per game last season. And really, he was better than that. 
If you look at the games where he didn't leave with injury, he actually averaged 16.1 points per game, which would be wide receiver one worthy. Furthermore, the underlying data also supports his finish from last season. He had a 23% target share, and he also registered career highs in PFF receiving grade and yards per route run, both of those matching wide receiver two worthy numbers dating back to 2012. And a couple of final notes on Judy. Do we really think Russell Wilson's going to be that bad again this year? He and Judy started to heat up at the end of last season, and really Russ has been good almost every other season of his career. And now we get Sean Payton coming in. We're going to get an upgrade in play calling. That, along with this talent profile, makes Judy someone I am absolutely willing to bet on in rounds four and five of drafts. In fact, he's my second most drafted wide receiver at 16% in those rounds. For our third breakout candidate, we're going to move down the draft board a little bit to round seven and eight. And I want to talk to you about Traylon Burks, who's coming off the board as the wide receiver 41. Burks is falling like a rock down draft boards since the signing of DeAndre Hopkins. And while that's not good for his top end range of targets, he's still a player based on his talent profile that I want to be targeting, especially at this price. While it's true that Burks was unable to really deliver a fantasy relevant finish last season, his underlying data points still paint a promising picture. His 73.9 PFF receiving grade is wide receiver two worthy. And then if you look at his targets per route run at 21% and his yards per route run at 1.75, those were both wide receiver three worthy. Using those data points along with players that had similar draft capital, his closest comps are CeeDee Lamb, Amari Cooper, Marquise Brown, and Jordan Matthews. It is true, there are concerns with the environment for Burks. We've got a run-first offense. We already talked about DeAndre Hopkins. But I will say, Ryan Tannehill, in this very offense, has supported two top 36 wide receivers before. And we also know, once the season starts, chaos takes over. There are ranges of outcomes where Traylon Burks takes a step forward. DeAndre Hopkins takes a step back. There are scenarios where Hopkins can't complete the season and Burks gets to step forward. We simply want to bet on the talent in this range of the draft. And that is why Traylon Burks is my fourth most drafted wide receiver overall at 21%. And that brings us to our final breakout candidate, and that is year three wide receiver Elijah Moore, who goes in rounds eight to nine of fantasy drafts. Moore has a polarizing profile. He doesn't even have a wide receiver four overall finish on his resume. However, he was a good prospect coming out of college, and you can't ignore how good he was down the stretch as a rookie in year one, where he had six finishes inside the top 36, including three in the top 10 in his final seven games. And in that rookie season, not only did he pop big in the box scores down the stretch, but his underlying data points, his PFF receiving grade, as well as his target earning, were both in the wide receiver two range. Unfortunately, Moore completely cratered last season after falling out of favor with the new Jets coaching staff and all of the peripheral underlying talent data points also pointed to a terrible season. So there definitely are some questions with Moore. However, in rounds eight and nine, he continues to be a player that I want to place bets on because he gets a huge upgrade at quarterback, moving from Zach Wilson to Deshaun Watson. We also have Kevin Stefanski coming out and saying, this isn't going to be the same Browns offense that wants to run the ball all the time. With Watson at the helm, they want to open things up, and that's part of the reason that they went out and got Elijah Moore. Those things combined make him my seventh most rostered wide receiver at 20%. So in summary, to find breakout wide receivers, we're looking for guys still playing in their first six years. We're also looking for wide receivers that already have a wide receiver two or three finish. And then finally, we're turning to that talent profile. And based on all of those factors, 
These are four of the players that I am drafting the absolute most today. However, if you would like to see the complete list, there are another 16 players that I've outlined. You can find it for free in my wide receiver breakout article over on fantasylife.com.